Welcome to Sethcraft. I'm currently building a 20 by 30 shop, and today I'm gonna to be installing the subfascia, the blocking between my trusses, and also extending out from the gable end to install my eaves on this building. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I have to say that whenever filming on a ladder, it's not exactly fun or ideal, and so this video may have a lot of, this is what needs to be done, and then show you this is what I did. Um, but we'll just see how it goes, and uh, I'll also toss the drone up so you may be able to see what things look like as I'm building. Now before I can install the subfascia here on the ends of my trusses, I have to install a board here on the end to allow me to extend out further. And so over here I've kind of done a little test without you, and you can see that I have the gable end uh, eaves started over here, and then also I've got one more board right here, and that will let me attach the subfascia from here all the way out to match this so I can have an eave all the way around the building. So uh, the first thing we want to do is start over here and begin getting the uh, boards cut for making the corner and also getting those eave boards uh, moved out. How this works, you can see this truss right here goes up to this point. This one over here is lowered by three and a half inches. And that's what allows a two by four to span from this side here on top of that one and then out to the outside. So what I'm gonna do first is measure from the end of this truss, two feet, four feet, six, eight, et cetera, until I get to the top. And that's where those boards are going to be installed. The subfascia board is gonna go on the end of my truss here. And so that will occupy an inch and a half of space. So what I'm gonna do is move the tape measure up and mark at two feet, four feet, six feet, etc. But I'm also going to basically subtract an inch and a half from there to uh, represent where that subfascia is gonna be. And so I'm gonna mark here and that's where my board's gonna go for the eaves. Now the eaves, I need to cut at 34 and a half inch. So let me show you what that's gonna look like. So a 34 and a half inch board will go from the side of the truss and it will extend past this gable end and that's going to represent what the eave is going to be like. So let's go ahead and cut these boards real quick and I will mark these trusses without you because it's going to be impossible to do that and hold the camera at the same time. To span across the eaves, I need to have five two by fours cut at 34 and a half inches. I'm going to take my first 34 and a half inch board and place it halfway across the gable end and then line up flush with my uh, marking here on the previous truss and that's where I'm going to be installing this. So I'm going to use some three and a half inch screws to get this in here. I know you can't see much but just making sure the top of this 2x4 is flush with the truss here. I just finished installing all these 34 and a half inch boards to extend over the building and have that one foot overhang for the gable end eave. And so now I need one more board here on the end of this board and that's going to be for connecting the last of the uh, overhang up here. So essentially I need to find this angle here, which I've actually used a piece of scrap board and I have uh, copied that angle and cut it. So that's the angle I need. And then the other end of this board needs to be uh, flat. So that's an easy enough cut. Um, so basically it will attach down here and go out to the end to allow my subfascia to extend out here, essentially looking kind of like that. So, all right, so next thing I need to do is find out what the length is from here to here. And I actually know that it is uh, 12 inches. So let's go cut this board real quick. I'm gonna use my template block to transfer this cut here. Match up this top edge. Make sure everything is flush. There we go. This is what the corner looks like. You can see I've just screwed in from this side 
and I've got that board sloping down and there is the angle we want that will match up with all the rest of these trusses here. And so now it's time to put on the subfascia. So this board right here will extend out to match the length of this one. And it'll go from here along this way. And I will use a 12 foot board and then have a small gap in between and then extend out further as it goes on that way. Uh, so then also we'll have a board that comes out from, so where this one reaches out here, there'll be another board here that connects to these and goes up to uh, create the subfascia on the eave side here. So let's go ahead and get those boards installed. Because I'm working alone, I built this little jig out of some scrap wood to go onto one of the trusses down here. And it will just allow me to set my 12 foot board into and I can hold it up into position. And that way I don't have to have uh, two people to uh, hold it up there while I'm uh, installing it. So anyway, Let's get this up here real quick and then get our first subfascia on this side. Here's the plan. I'm going to hoist up this 12 foot board and place one end into that uh, jig that was put down there. And that will hold up the other end so I don't have to hold it from here. And now I brought this piece of scrap that I can place against these other uh, gable end pieces. All right, about right there, ought to do it. Now that same piece of scrap that I was using, I'm gonna let that rest down here. And I know it's hard for you to see here, but if I were to put the uh, 12 foot board flush with my trusses, it would have a triangle gap in here. So I need to drop that down to the point where it's flush. So it's almost a half inch drop. I'll bring you up here to show you that here in just a moment. So right about there is where I want it. Using this piece of scrap wood, I can bring this down and you can see how there's about a half inch gap between the truss right there and this board. And that is what keeps the uh, roof line straight. Otherwise, if you brought this piece up to that, it would have a triangular gap in there and that would not be good. I have the first 12 foot piece of subfascia installed. Now it's time to get the subfascia that goes here on the gable end. Now the previous cut that was made for the raptor tails or the end of the trusses can be used once again for the top up here. So essentially right where those two come together, that will be right there and it'll extend down 12 foot and I can cut off any extra that I need here later. So let's go ahead and place this cut right here into a 12 foot board. All right, using that same template as before, I can make this transfer. All right, now it's time to get this uh, top subfascia on here. Now I set up my guide, my little jig as I had before. And so I can put that right over here and that will help support this board. There we go. Now I can climb up here and get this centered. Now this is a full 12 foot board and I only need somewhere around 11 and a half feet. And so I'll have to cut off the other end later, but uh, for now it should be fine to have this extra. Everything you do on a ladder is a lot slower than whenever it's on the ground. Okay, I finished getting this side over here on. Let me go ahead and get the next side up. Just looking at it, it seems like my angle's maybe a little off, but I guess we'll find out here in just a moment. Yeah, the angle's off some, but I think it's gonna be all right. All of this is going to be covered anyhow. As you can see, my angle is a little bit off there at the very peak, but it is looking pretty good. I'm very pleased with it. So I will have to come back and trim off this little bit here on the end of both sides. And that will basically terminate and be ready for the uh, uh, soffit and fascia to go on. All right, so I also have to continue down here and add more of that and do the other side just like this one right here has been done. 
Um, but let's move on to the next thing, which is going to be putting the blocking in for the OSB to rest on. So I'm going to have a, uh, a line of blocking at the four foot mark. We'll go all the way across the building. I possibly will stagger them to make sure that the OSB has plenty to attach to. Um, so it has that at the four foot mark and then up here at the eight foot mark as well. We'll have a piece going all the way across. And I'll have to see if I'm ambitious enough to put at the top. I'll have to have two more boards going across. But for now, let's just stick with the four foot and eight foot. So each uh, gap between these trusses should be consistent. And I uh, hopefully can do this pretty quick. I just put a couple of these blocks in here without you to make sure I was getting the uh, swing of it. And uh, man, this really does lock down the structure nice and tight. I may not even put the eight foot ones on here and just use some uh, little H clips to keep that uh, OSB in line. Um, but I think adding this definitely does make this structure that much more secure. So it'll have the top brace right there and then this one at the four foot. And I may toss in an occasional brace up here just for the fun of it. But anyway, uh, some of my process is to uh, take my tape measure. I don't know if I'll be able to do it here while holding the camera, but we'll give it a try. Uh, let's see here. All right, so I set my tape measure on the end down there and I move up to the four foot mark and I place a mark there. And then after that's done, I take my tape measure between the two different trusses and I see, for instance, this one is 22 and a half. So I'll cut that and then I'll move on over to the next one over here and I'll do the same. And I will continue that all the way down on this side and then I will move over to the other side of the building and do it over there as well. All right, we got 22 and a half here. I've got you looking almost straight up in the air. All right, let's go ahead and get this one on here and then I will work without you to get the rest of these done. It's gonna be a bit repetitive and I don't wanna bore you with anything. I'll tell you what's not boring, this shaky ladder. As you can see, this is one of those tasks that's gonna take a while, so I will start working on the rest of these to get all of them done without you here. Now, before I step off the ladder, I can measure my next one over so I can do a cut without having to step back up here. 22 and a half. To cut off the corners, I've transferred a line to represent where the board is behind. And I'm just going to use my circular saw to cut that off of there. And that will make this flush with my subfacial on the other side. There we go. Very nice. All right. I just completed all the blocking. It took me two days, but I think it looks pretty good. I had a couple of mistakes on the gable end, but everything else seems to be looking really nice. So let's step back real quick and take a look at the work that I've completed here. First up, I worked on the gable end to extend out to cause an eave, as you can see right here. Some people refer to these as ladders because you can see they kind of look like ladders as they go up the roof line here. Uh, so I've got a little bit over a foot with this outcropping right here, and that should give plenty of extra space there for rain to drip away from my doors and, uh, and windows and such. So coming down here, I had to build out this corner so added that 34 and a half inch board and then added that angle board right there. And that also worked out really well. Whenever I put in my sub fascia, I had to drop down. So as you can see right there, I dropped down about half inch or so. And that allows my sheathing for the roof to go over that sub fascia and not have a little dip right there, which is really important. All right, after that was done, of course I got the front here done as well. 
but I also went through and put blocking on the four foot mark on both sides. And if I shake the structure, it is much stronger now than it ever was. So adding those have really helped. Now I opted not to put in the eight foot mark because once the OSB goes on here, it should lock things down nicely, but it's good to have that extra two by four in there for extra support. Now, I didn't show you this, but there is a board right in there that combines the, um, an eight foot board with the 12 foot boards. And that basically allows me to uh, not have any gaps in there. I am gonna have to uh, rip that down some because it sticks out too far whenever I put my soffit board on later on. As mistakes go, on both ends, I had this gap, as you can see right here, and that needed to be closed up a little bit better, um, but it's hard to work on a 12-foot ladder and match those up perfectly. It will be covered, so I'm not too concerned about it, and uh, I don't think it's gonna cause any issues with structural integrity. And lastly, as you saw, I took my circular saw and took off that extra corner there, and it looks really good. If I follow down, there's a slight waver in my trusses, but for the most part, it's nice and straight. Man, it is hot out here, and I'm also covered in sawdust. Time to go take a break. The next step in this build is going to be putting the OSB and underlayment on top of these trusses, and it will essentially weather this place in. I've been looking forward to that moment for quite a while because I'm tired of this floor getting rained on. And once I have that on, I can start doing wiring, windows, insulation, and all kinds of other stuff inside here. Thank you so much for watching. If you would, hit that thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed because I have tons more content on the way here for this build and beyond. I'm Seth with the Seth Craft Workshop, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.